Hey guys, Colin here to take you through some stretches and exercises for limited shoulder range of motion. Now, what I mean by this is that where you would normally have a range of motion, bring your arm all the way up and overhead to the side and the same in front. You maybe can only lift it to here in front or to here in the side and you suddenly feel like now the shoulder blade and the shoulder are having to kind of scrunch up to try and get it up higher. Something's going on in the joint here that's restricting your range of motion and causing some sort of pain and limitation. So what we want to do is we want to target those muscles in through that joint that are causing the problem and uh, find the ones that are the tightest and then those are the ones that you're going to focus on the most. One thing that's really important to think about during this process is that uh, a joint like the shoulder or the hip or the knee, whatever it might be, it's going to stay stuck in a pattern of restricted range of motion as long as it feels like it's not safe to go outside of that range of motion. So what we're talking about here is slowly, slowly and systematically starting to increase the range of motion no matter how we get there, just in a really gentle way. So this is not like zero to 100. This is incrementally and in some ways actually marking down or keeping notes as to what you're able to do each day and you're building on that. So this is not a fix a quick remedy. This is something that may take a little bit of time, especially if you have something like adhesive capsulitis, which is frozen shoulder. So just try and be patient and try and work with it each and every day. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, the first area we're gonna target is this muscle called the subscapularis. It sits right on the front of your shoulder blade. So if you imagine your shoulder blade it's kind of going along in this plane in the back here, right? In the front of it is a muscle that sits there. It's one of your rotator cuff muscles, and it's one of the muscles that tends to lock up, tighten up the most when there's shoulder pain. It's almost an unconscious um, response to the pain that causes you to want to bring your arm into your side and kind of hold it there like you're a wounded animal. So what we're going to do is we're going to target that area, and what I'm going to have you do is Choose a chair or um, you could even maybe have uh, like a tabletop that you put a book under. I'm bringing mine up this high. You may not be able to get your shoulder up that high or your elbow up that high in relation to your shoulder. In which case you just start down a little bit lower. You put your uh, arm on top of a book that's on a table or something like that or you sit next to a bed, whatever it takes. But what I'm going to show you here is how to get to that muscle because it's kind of near the armpit. But notice I'm not going to dig up and in on the armpit, what I want to do is actually take my fingertips and angle them straight back toward the wall behind me, like so, and I'm going to slide right along the part of my uh, chest here, and I'm going to slide until I feel my fingertips actually hit the front side of that shoulder blade, and they'll actually be hitting that muscle called the subscapularis. So once you find that muscle, if you're wondering if you're at the right spot or not, what you can do is with this hand here, push down onto whatever surface your, your elbow is on, push down, and with your fingertips there, you'll feel the muscle push into your fingertips. It'll pop right in there because this motion here or this motion here, that inward rotation is what activates it. So you're going to get into that muscle, and what I want you to do is with your fingertips, you're just going to get in there and just do little circles. Just gently massage, okay? And you're going to try and let the arm and everything else relax as you're doing that. Just do some gentle circles and kind of work your way around. The only thing you have to be cautious about is the tendency to dig up and in to the armpit because you have, um, you've got your lymph glands in there and we don't want to irritate them at all. So, but getting into this muscle should feel really good. You can kind of work your way down right in through this whole line here. And as you kind of work your way down, you'll feel where it kind of drops off, meaning that you come to the side of your body and you're no longer in the front of that shoulder blade kind of pressing up against it like you were before. So that's what I would start with is the subscapularis release. For these next stretches and releases, for the next two, you're going to need a rubber ball like this. What we're going to be doing with this rubber ball is we're going to be releasing some of the smaller areas around the shoulder that can reflexively want to tighten up and lock up in response to any kind of pain or discomfort that's going on. So we're going to first target this side deltoid, which is right in here. And what we're going to do is take the ball like so. I'm just going to simply put it against the wall like this. And I'm just going to lean with a little bit of my body weight into the wall. And I'm just going to bend my legs and roll up and down. 
and then I'm going to rock on my from my heels to my toes and back and forth and roll side to side and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an area that is like exquisitely tender tight sore and what I want to do when I find those spots is I want to hold I just want to hold constant pressure take some deep breaths and just imagine those muscles opening up and relaxing around the pressure of the ball for me leaning into it and I'm going to go back and forth like that I'm going to probably spend about 30 seconds to it went from 30 seconds to three minutes doing this. So if you find some really tender spots, put in the time, get them to let go. You're not trying to mash the hell out of it. What you're trying to do is just gently get it to relax and open. So now that we've released the side of the shoulder, we're now going to target actually the back of the shoulder blade. So for this, you're going to need a sock or a bag or something like that. You can put the ball in. You're just going to put it over your shoulder and you're going to be targeting right on the back of the shoulder blade. So just like so. Now from that position, you're just going to lean into the wall and you're going to roll that ball back and forth. You can see the ball there, even in the bag or in a sock, you can still roll side to side and then bending your knees, rolling up and down. What you're looking for is any tender, tight, sore area in through there. Just like we did before with the side shoulder, you're going to lean into those areas that feel really tender and, and sore. You're going to take some deep breaths into them, maybe five to ten deep breaths really try and relax into that area. Now we can try to get the back of the shoulder and then we can also kind of come into this armpit area here behind the shoulder. There's a small muscle in there called the teres minor that is uh, particularly tight and tense with any kind of shoulder um, issue. It'll tend to lock up. So notice where I'm placing the ball here. So here's my armpit area here. I'm putting it down lower now and a little more laterally and I'm just going to get into that area as well and I'm just going to roll back and forth. Now it takes a little practice to find the Terry's Minor. You might look it up um, on, uh, on Google or something like that just so you get an idea of what you're looking for. But basically you're looking for this area right in through here. This is the armpit area in the back. You're just going up just a little bit from there. And that's where you're going to put the ball and then Okay, so now that we've loosened up some of the problematic muscles around the shoulder that we're trying to get to open up, what we're going to now do is some movement. So we're going to start with pendulum swings. So pendulum swings simply means I'm going to put my supporting hand on a bed, a table, anything like that. The side that I'm trying to get to loosen up, what I'm going to do is let that arm hang. And I'm going to start with no weight in my hand at all, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make small circles with my arm. But there's a trick to this. The trick is that you don't necessarily want to generate the motion here from your shoulder. You don't want to have the shoulder doing a lot of work. What we want the shoulder to do is really relax here so that that joint can open up. So what I'm going to recommend is you just kind of shake your arm out here and you're going to create the circle by rocking your whole body back and forth. Notice how I'm just kind of bending my legs and rocking forward and back a little bit to create this circle. Now, with this circle, I'd recommend doing anywhere from 10 to 20 circles, one direction, and then the other direction. And when you're doing the circles, we want you to start with a, a smaller circle, so kind of like this, and then over time, or what's com you know, kind of following what's comfortable for you, increase that diameter of the circle, make it bigger and bigger. Once you've gotten to the point where you've got a pretty big circle, and you can do it, you know, 20 times one direction, 20 times the other without any discomfort, then that's the time to take a hand weight, like a three pound, a two pound, three pound, five pound weight. Start low and slowly work your way up and do it with the weight. And that is going to start to get that whole joint lubricated so that it gets used to function. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that one of the big challenges with opening up a, a joint like the shoulder that's gotten really locked down is teaching the joint to not feel like it needs to protect itself. And so it's basically trying to open up that comfort zone that your shoulder is used to. So we're going to start with this next exercise focusing on that. So these are called wall slides. So with wall slides, all you're going to do is you're going to bring your arm up, put your hand on the wall like so, elbow almost touching the wall, and all I'm going to do is slowly kind of slide my elbow and arm up a little bit. And I'm going to bring it to the point where I start to feel a little bit of resistance going on here. Notice just kind of the small tendencies your body has to want to tense up or tighten up to protect that joint. When you kind of feel like you've hit one of those little barriers, what I'm going to have you do is then stop, 
Take a few deep breaths. Try and let the whole shoulder and arm relax, almost like it's dead weight. It's not your arm. You don't want your arm to drop. And because your elbow is against the wall here and your hand's against the wall, it shouldn't drop. But what we do want you to do is allow the shoulder to kind of depress a little bit, just to relax. So you're going to let it relax, take five to ten deep breaths, and then see if you can slide up a little bit more. Now when you're working these incremental amounts of movement, say I came to here, I hit my barrier, and now I feel like it's tightening, I've done my breath, it's relaxed a little bit. Now for me to generate the motion of sliding the whole elbow up, it might be a little bit much and the shoulder might lock up. So instead, now I'm going to use my fingertips and I'm just going to crawl up just a little bit. And then until I hit that next barrier, I take a few deep breaths. So you want to do this two or three times when you're doing wall slides. Find a barrier where your body wants to tense. Take those breaths. Get it to relax. Creep up just a little bit more with the fingertips. Take another breath. You know, another five breaths, ten breaths. Get it to relax again. So do that two or three times. And what we're doing is we're, we're reconditioning this joint to feel like it's safe to open up again. We're telling it that you're not going to take it, you know, to into a range of motion where it's going to be painful, but instead you're going to gradually and systematically get it to relax and that you're paying attention to what's going on. Okay, so now we're back to where we started. I got the back of the chair right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, finish some of the range of motion um, challenges with what we call internal and external range of motion. So what that means is that we're going to be taking this bone of the upper arm, we're going to be rotating it one direction and the other direction. So this would be external, this would be internal range of motion, and we can also do this like this, like so, okay? Now the thing with getting the shoulder to be um, healed again is that any range of motion that you increase, whether it's forward flexion, lateral flexion, internal, external rotation, any increase in range of motion you get in one area, it's going to help all the others. So that's why we're hitting it from a bunch of different sides. So for this, what we're going to now do is, instead of putting your elbow on top of the chair like this, like we were doing before to get to that subscapularis, I'm going to have you put the point of your elbow into the back of the chair here. And we're going to start by just slowly bringing your hand up, like so. Now you might hit another one of those barriers that we talked about with the wall slides. So if you find you hit a barrier and you find that your shoulder's starting to tense, that's where you back off just a little bit, take five to ten deep breaths, Try and let the whole shoulder relax, tell your body it's okay, and then we're going to challenge it a couple of times. Once you've done that with this external rotation, we're going to do the same thing with internal rotation. So this would be at a horizontal. I want to try and bring it down lower. So I do the same thing coming this way. Again, hitting those barriers, taking five to ten deep breaths, trying to let it relax, and trying to bring the arm down just a little bit more. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how you work at a computer or at a desk, um, and in particular the way you're using your mouse, because a lot of people are injuring their shoulders and keeping themselves from recuperating from limited range of motion and uh, shoulder issues by the way that they're working on the computer, and in particular the way they're grabbing the mouse. So I don't have a desk set up here, so I'm using my massage table, so just imagine this, this would be my my desk here, my mouse would be here, my computer would be here. Now this is what I want you to keep in mind. Most people, when they're using the mouse, and I'm going to show you this from the front, they tend to bring the elbow in tight to the side and they grab the mouse like it's a wild animal that they don't want to let go of. So you can imagine what this does, right? You're gripping on and you're holding tight. Now the more you concentrate, the more intense the work environment is around you, uh, the more stress you have, deadlines, whatever, that starts to add more tension into you, the holding, and this is a lot of an, uh, for the most part, this is actually kind of an unconscious process that's going on. What I want you to do is start making it conscious. I want you to start focusing on what you're doing and checking in with your shoulder, your elbow, and your arm. What I want you to do is this. I want you to go from this clutching with the elbow in to letting the elbow float out a little bit, letting the arm hang, let the shoulder be relaxed, don't let it come up like so, let it be relaxed, and imagine that this elbow is like a weight that's swinging. Remember the pendulum exercise we were doing, like so? Same deal. You're just going to let the elbow kind of float around. So this is like dead weight. This is the joint here that we're using to circle that dead weight, and we're using the minimal amount of muscular tension to make that happen. So if I'm sitting right here, 
I'm just going to slowly kind of move that mouse around and let the hand be relaxed, let the shoulder be relaxed, let the elbow feel like it's dead weight and it's just floating and making slight gliding motions back and forth and slight circling motions. So the challenge is for you to just check in with yourself periodically when you're working on the computer, see what you're doing. Check your shoulder first. Is it up high or is it relaxed? Check your elbow. Is your elbow a little away from your side or is it locked in tight to your side? And then check the tension in your arm. And those three things are going to be real key things to change and to retrain in order to help keep your shoulder nice and loose and keep it as healthy as possible when you're doing this kind of work.